Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 23 of our BDD video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about parallel execution with specflow plus selenium plus n unit. And again, this video is a complete continuation of part 22 of this particular video series. And before watching this part, I would please request you to watch part 22 since this video is already part B. So before watching this video, you need to watch part A so that you will have a clear understanding of what this video is all about. All right, so let's get started. So in our part A, which is nothing but part 22, we were getting a null reference exception while executing the code that we wrote. So how to resolve this null reference exception? We just stopped there and we did not tell the answer. So this is the video where we are gonna seek for the answer. So in order to get the reference of the web driver object in the steps class that we return, the step definition class, we need to use two different techniques of our spec flow and in that one of the techniques we have already discussed in our video series of this particular BDD video series of Excel Automation channel, which is nothing but the contest injection. So we are going to use the contest injection technique to get the object reference from one place to another. But we also need to register the web driver, the web driver's object into our code execution that we can do using what is called as a IOC container or otherwise called as inversion of control container. So the inversion of control containers can be done using the IE object container interface which is available from the spec flow itself. So we are going to make use of this. So once again, the contest injection is something otherwise called as dependency injection, right? We have already discussed about it in our previous video. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this particular video as well. So what is IOC? A quick introduction. In software engineering, the inversion of control is a design pattern in which the custom written portion of a computer program receives the flow of control from a generic framework, which means not your actual code is going to receive the control from your actual code, which is nothing but the other class. Rather, a generic framework is going to customize the flow and going to control that. That's what is the inversion of control, right? So a software architecture with this design inverts the control as compared to the traditional procedural program. So in a traditional procedural program, the custom code that expresses the purpose of the program calls into reusable libraries to take care of the generic task. But with the inversion of control, it is the framework that calls into the custom or task specific codes. So I took all these informations from Wikipedia. So the source of this particular information that you are seeing right here is Wikipedia. So you can always go ahead and read the information in Wikipedia as well. Just an introduction on inversion of control so that you will see, you'll understand what this IOC is all about. So let's quickly see this in action and perform the changes in our code that we already wrote and see how things works and how to make our code running in parallel. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same code that we were working in our previous video and we got a null reference exception because the driver object was not receiving the web drivers which is nothing but the Firefox drivers object right here and we, we got the null reference exception. So how to resolve this as I already said we need to perform two operations. One is the contest injection and the IOC container. So I'm going to do both of these operations in the hooks class. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a private read-only IE object container and this interface is available in BODI so I'm just going to call that particular namespace and then let's give this a name as object container as a variable right and then I also need to create a private I web driver reference so that I can make use of the drivers and you can note this time that I'm actually not going to use the base class so I'm just gonna get rid of the base class because this is the one just creating a whole problem right here so I'm just going to delete this class itself completely and we will get some other exceptions right here because the base class is in the exist here and if you call this guy it's going to throw you an error and these things are going to throw error as well. Don't worry about it yet. So I've just deleted it and then I'm going to add the reference for the IWeb driver. 
So as a rule of uh, the context injection or the dependency injection, you need to create a constructor and then you need to pass the object for the I object container, right? So I'm just going to create that object container. And then within this, I'm just going to call the object container is equal to the object container, which I'm just passing into the constructor right and then the final change which I'm gonna make in this particular class is instead of the driver that we used from the base I'm just gonna call the underscore driver that I just defined or declared right here and then I'm gonna add one of the most important code the object container dot this is the code which is going to register your instance as i web driver for the variable driver this is the most important part this is where the registration of your instance object is going to happen and this object is what is going to be carry forwarded to all your dependency injector classes or the steps class that's where we're going to actually call right and then underscore driver dot quit and now we can see this is the only change that I have made right here and your code is pretty much good to go other changes once again as a rule for the dependency injection you need to create the iWeb driver underscore driver right here and then the constructor so the constructor is going to be holding your web driver right so i web driver driver underscore driver is equal to driver there we go so this is the dependency injections rules that you need to pass in for all the binding classes again here in the user form steps uh, so let's change the constructor name and instead of this driver everywhere i'm just going to replace this to underscore driver and this is going to be underscore driver as well and let's go to the login step dot cs instead of driver it's going to be underscore driver and these two is going to be underscore driver as well that's it guys this is the only change seems to be pretty very very easy right so this is the context injection change and then i registered with the ioc container and that's going to be sitting in our hooks.cs right here right let's save this and let's quickly run this one particular test and see if it really works so this time i expect the application to navigate to the login page and you can see that it is actually navigating the login page it's entering the username and password there we go boom the test got passed as well super cool right Let's quickly run the user details form entry verification scenario and see if it works. So it opened the site and navigating to the login page, entering the details pretty fast and clicking the save button. Boom. Done. Very fast. And we have already enabled the parallelizable attribute in our very first video, which is nothing but part 21, I guess. So I'm just going to save these two tests and I'm going to execute these two tests parallelly this time. Let's quickly run both of this test and see how things works. And you can see that this time both of these tests are executing parallelly and we would see that there will be two browsers opening parallelly and running the test. And you can see it is running and there is one more browser which is going to spin up. And that's the reason you can see that it is actually running in parallel but we don't really see that it is really executing in parallel or not we need to add some kind of threading to sleep the test so what I'm going to do is in the login step once I do the login so let's see once I click this or maybe before clicking the submit button I will do a thread dot oops thread dot sleep of maybe 15 second too bad and try to run this test both the test so one test will be waiting for 15 seconds before clicking the login 
but the other test might have spinned up by the time. I guess this is the guy which is waiting for 15 seconds and you can see parallelly there is one more browser opened and it is actually performing the operation for us. Okay, because both the tests are actually waiting for 15 seconds and the reason is because both the tests are performing the login operation. That's very bad. I should have waited in a different step definition though. And you can see both the tests got passed and they are executing in parallel as well. Let's quickly do last test. I'm going to open the PowerShell. Remember the same PowerShell which we were working in part 21. I'm just going to execute these two tests in console and see what's going to happen. So I should see two threads being spawned and that will be displayed in the console as well. And you can see that one browser is opened. One more browser is open as well. All right, so one test got passed and you can see there is a thread 11 and 9 right here and it's performing some operation there and it's going to again show some other threads as well. There we go. Super cool. And these are executing in parallel without any problem. And you can see that during parallel execution, there will be a tremendous amount of time difference if you run both the test in sequentially. You can achieve the parallelization using specs flow very, very easily using these changes that we have discussed and please ensure that you don't use any static keyword anywhere in your test code because that's going to be the culprit for your failure of test execution parallelly in specflow right so that's it guys thank you once again for watching this video and have a great day